Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. I'm your host, Dave, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, I'm looking at the Hot Wheels Star Wars Mandalorian Speeder, released in 2021. This vehicle was first seen in Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2. Now, when trying to do research on this vehicle, I was sort of thrown a curveball, if you will. It seems that this speeder is classified as the Zypher J Swoop Bike, which was also from Season 1. Now, if you compared the photos of Season 2 and Season 1, you know, the speeders don't exactly look identical. I believe on StarWars.com, the major photo they use for the Season 1 speeder actually has a rectangle piece like a radiator right here in the front connecting the outriggers and steering vanes to the main body. So it's sort of missing a lot of parts, and that led me believe to one of the answers I was given when trying to reach out about this ship is that it's basically a very stripped down version of the Zypher J Swoop Bike, and you know, I, I could buy it, why not? But if anybody has any more solid evidence, please let me know in the comments below or feel free to email me because I was really, you know me, I like to have my data, I like to look up stuff, but no matter where I looked, <laughs> every source said this is the Zypher J, so who am I to argue, I guess? But anyway, I was really excited to get this ship and I tried to film it over the weekend, but in New Jersey, we actually had a lot of power outages and thunderstorms, and it was really nasty. And if you stay tuned to After My Closing, uh, I actually have a shot of me talking about the Zypher J, and all of a sudden the power goes out. So if you want a quick little laugh, you can watch it at the end of the video. So anyway, back to this miniature. For the size of this bad boy, it's a tad over 3 inches long, or for our metric users, a tad over 8 centimeters long. So we have a lot to talk about today. If you're new to the channel, what I'd like to do is go over the major components, have a nice close-up look to see the fine details, check out the paint, put it on a stand, compare it to some other pieces, and then we'll be done. So let's get started. So let's get this video started looking at the mold. Just like in all my videos, I will go over all the major sections of the item, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see those fine details. So starting off, we have our steering vanes in the front, Looking good, nicely detailed. We have our outriggers with negative space, which looks amazing. We have our handlebars, aka maneuver controls. Our seat. And then these pedals right here and here are actually altitude controls. This section right here, the main body, it has no negative space. But right here should be the repulsor lift engine, which is awesome. Right here we can see Mando's rifle. Sick. We have a satchel bag with some nice detailing with the child, aka Grogu. Looking amazing. Nicely done. Some more ship components. And then we have Mando himself with a nice cape, best car armor, pants, boots. Very nicely done. We can see some straps there, gloves, his blaster, and jetpack. Very nicely done. Now on the bottom, we have a lot of rivets holding it together. Copyright crap and a peg port for the stand. All in all, a nice looking vehicle with a decent looking paint job. So now let's have a closer look. All right, getting as close as I possibly can, we'll start looking at the steering vanes here and then work our way down to the ship and then turn it around and look at Mando. So looking here, we have our rivet, some interesting molding and design work here. I love the cuts here for the veins, pretty cool. We can see there is some nice molding here, looking sharp. Now this section, the outriggers, is mostly just rectangles or cylinders. So there's really not much to write home about, but it is what it is. You can see it's very metallic. See a lot of glitter mixed in there, which isn't a bad thing. We're just zoomed in all the way. So pretty cool. We can see a little detailing in here as well. Very cool. Coming up to the bottom, we have some molding work where the outriggers meet the main body, which is nice. Another rivet, some designs, copyright crap, peg port for the stand, more rivets. And what I like about down here is 
Yes, we have our altitude pedals, which should be negative space here and here, but it is what it is. But look at all the little angles here and little designs. That's pretty sharp. Come down another rivet and some more angles in the aft. All in all, pretty nice. I love all the little details. See, we get a little rivet right there. Some rivets there, more pipes extending outward. Pretty cool, and this is the bottom. Nobody's even gonna really look at this, so nice touches. Now coming up to the main body, you can see it's very flat and glossy here. We have our seat right there, and that goes underneath and then up here. Really cool, really glittery. <laughs> Not bad. For the main body, our engine is right here where my thumb is. We can see some nice little doodads and modules in there. Looking sharp. And then we have Mando's rifle. Which is pretty good. I'm not gonna knock it. Nicely done. In the aft, there's nothing really there. And on this side, again, all little doodads, looking really sharp. Good stuff. Now for the satchel bag, as you can see, we have some straps and little tiny folds here and there. Really cool, we can see some straps right here. And then we have our child. Which, close up, looks kind of sloppy, but when you're looking at this from your desk, it looks awesome. You can see he's sort of reaching out here. His ears are leaning back. He's just having fun. And that's awesome. Now, I gotta say this. This might be the smallest Grogu I have in my entire collection. If you guys at home have something smaller than this, please let me know. Like, I know I'm a big guy, but... This is not even half the size of the width of my finger. Madness. But anywho, let's talk about Mando. Now, on the whole, this is very detailed. You can see his boot has a lot of stuff on there. Lots of little details here and there, which looks great. His pants have nice detailing. The plates are all there. Not really painted on the legs. But, you know, right here should be silver, but... Oh, uh, what are you going to do? But moving on from there, we have his belt and bottom, and we have his blaster, which is painted, and looks pretty well for the size. Looking at the other side here, pretty cool. We can see some straps and modules right there on his armor. Looking good. Nice cape. I love the little folds here. Great stuff. Can't go wrong with a cape, even underneath is molded, which is nice. Here we have the backpack, aka the jetpack, looking dope. Love the two little thrusters there. Remember, for the size, this isn't that bad at all. Here we have the arm with some glue sticking out of there. Looks like this should be the hinge right there to hold his arm, but I don't know. It looks like it's put together right, so who knows? We have his shoulder armor, looking good on both sides, nicely molded and painted. His arms looking great, his two gauntlets looking good, and his gloves, look at the detail on them. That's pretty awesome, nice stuff. And then we have the cape going around his neck, and his helmet, which looks pretty good. Now, I don't know, looking at his whole body, it seems like something is off, and I can't really point a finger at what it is. I don't know, maybe the helmet's not wide enough, or his shoulders aren't wide enough. But I don't know, something just seems a little off. That's just to me. Maybe I'm nuts, but I don't know. It looks great, don't get me wrong. But I don't know, something seems a little off. And if you guys have any theories or opinions, let me know in the comments below, because I would like to hear them. But anywho, the molding is pretty good on his helmet. His visor is nicely molded and painted. 
You can see all the little Mandalorian elements that make their helmets so cool. Everything's there. The little curve right there. The side detailing looking great. This side looking good. The aft and the top of the helmet looking amazing. All in all, it's a nice little piece. I kind of dig it. And the chest, you can see the Mandalorian armor is molded and painted. Even underneath, right there, looking good. And he has his strap there, which is nicely molded as well. Pretty awesome. And that's everything I have to say about the mold. I know I went on and on, but you know, I have to go over all this stuff so you at home know what you're picking up. All in all, this is a very nice piece. Some great little details throughout, even on the bottom. Looking good. And the Mandalorian, even though in my opinion, something is not 100%. Maybe it's the perspective or scaling on the armor. But I don't know, just something's not right. And it, it could just be me. Maybe I'm losing my mind. But on the whole, besides my thoughts on how the armor is situated and how he looks... It's not bad at all. This is some great detailing work. I love the jetpack, the cape flowing, this pistol, even his rifle is there. This has a lot going for it, and I do recommend it for anybody who collects these and is a fan of The Mandalorian. So now, let's talk about the paint. And now, looking at that paint on the Hot Wheels Star Wars Mandalorian speeder, this baby features about nine different colors, believe it or not. And I didn't believe it at first, but... We'll count them as we go around. First of all, the main color here, as you can see, is this weird metallic brown, almost a green tint to it. And it looks pretty good, I'm not gonna knock it. Now, right here, you can see where the plastic tries to uh, blend with the die cast paint. And the die cast paint is a little more brown than green. So we'll count that as metallic brown there. But what are you going to do? They really tried. I'll give them that. They tried to match it. And from a distance, it works. It's just when you get up close, eh, you're going to see. Then we have metallic gray, silver. You can see uh, it's all different shades here. Looking good. I love the way the light bounces off of this. Fantastic stuff. Moving on, we have light brown and silver, almost chrome. For his rifle, looking pretty cool. Coming in the back, we have light tan, light brown, green, and black for the child. And the satchel bags, looking good. For the Mando himself, we have this nice olive green for his cape. Chrome for his best car armor. Black for the gloves. Glossy black for his visor, which looks cool. Then we have this, I would say it's sort of a brownish and a really dark tan for his boot. Which is pretty awesome. Chrome for his blaster as well. And his jetpack. All in all, a lot of different colors here all working together to give us something really neat. And that does it for the paint. All in all, I really love the mold on here and I think the paint really works as well. So let's put this baby on a stand compared to some other pieces and then we'll be done. And just like other Hot Wheels vehicles, we can see it comes with a translucent stand with the mud horn on there, looking sharp. Now we don't have a pylon per se, just this little nib, but you peg it in the port like so, hear that click. And just like that, everybody, you are good to go. And now for a quick size comparison with the Hot Wheels Star Wars Mandalorian speeder seen in the center. We have some other Mandalorian vessels here to compare it to. First, on the left-hand side, we have the Razor Crest, which is a great-looking, very chrome ship. Beautiful. And on the right-hand side, we have the Child using the Force. Now, the Child and the Mandalorian Speeder come in the same wave, and I think all these ships go well together. Nice. And for an added bonus size comparison with the Mandalorian Speeder seen in the center... First, on the left-hand side, we have Boba Fett's Slave One. And I know there's a huge to-do about them changing the name or whatever. It's always going to be Slave One to me, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. And finally, on the right-hand side, 
We have the Bad Batch's Havoc Marauder, one of the cooler ships that Hot Wheels has made in a very long time, in my own opinion. Nice stuff. If you're interested in seeing reviews of any of the ships I showed today, check the links in the description below. And that does it today for my review of the Hot Wheels Star Wars Mandalorian Speeder released in 2021. All in all, I really like this piece. It's about 3 inches long, as I stated before, and it has a lot going for it. I think the strongest attribute is the mold. It's got lots of little details throughout, even though it may not look it. But when we got a closer look, from the armor, the little details on the helmet or jetpack, or even the front chest plate, all the way to Grogu and the underbelly of the speeder, this thing is loaded with details, you just have to know where to look. And I think for that aspect of the miniature, it's amazing. Now looking at the paint, I stated before it has about nine different colors. And quite frankly, it possibly has even more. As I stare at it and go through my list, you know, we have green, brown, dark tan, tan, brown, dark brown, metallic brown, metallic brown with green, chrome, silver, the list goes on and on. I think this is painted exquisitely. Now, is it perfect? No. For the most part, I love the dark earth tones and metals. I think it looks great. The only area where it doesn't really fit would be where Grogu is. That nice bright tan satchel. As amazing as that looks, I think it would have looked better if they used a darker tan. Maybe a dark wash. You know, just to cover up that fresh look. Because the rest of the speeder looks worn and used. And then you have Satchel and Grogu, which is, you know, mint plastic and paint. So, I don't know. But on the whole, amazing paint job. Lots of stuff going on here. And it works well with the mold. Now, being a Hot Wheels vehicle, it does come with a translucent stand that I'm a real big fan of. It's one of those short little connectors that all the speeders nowadays are coming on. And I dig it. It fits in well with the collection, and I like it a lot. And that's everything I have to say about this possible Zypher J swoop bike today. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. If you like to see new videos every week, subscribe. Again, everybody out there, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch my content. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Now, if you looked at the two speeders from both seasons and put them side by side, you could... And the power just went out. Beautiful.